After more than three decades of lying comatose, the cinema culture has gradually returned to Nigeria. One of the organizations that have made this possible is the Film House Cinemas. On this episode, the Talk TV crew visits a mall in Ibadan to engage with some of the managers of the Film House Cinemas. Welcome, Namde Azike and Tolu Shebanjo. Mr. Azike, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me, Femi. Now, uh, before we go into the nitty gritty of your business model and operation, give us a broad overview of the industry, globally, continentally, and nationally. Well, the industry we're looking at is uh, it's a cinema industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry, and it's been with us for decades, close to centuries now. And uh, I'll tell you this, uh, movies have been shown worldwide in different formats in different cinemas you know across across the board and i think uh, it's actually generated from uh, from europe you know given the structure you know to have a proper cinema while what we had in africa was your you know your usual moonlight story people liked to you know your village square things but i think the europeans you know saw saw business in it and decided to take it a step further than your regular shows to you know something more you know something more fantastic you know started with broadway and all that then they went into movies you know proper movie sake and uh, i think the the industry has grown over the years and uh, you know having people watch 35 mm's you know now you're having hd projectors you know high definition hrf's projectors you know delivering movies around the world so i think uh, it's grown from europe and it's coming to africa and uh, and africa has been a big market i know you you of course know that uh, we are we are continental for billion over a billion you know people and uh, and you know coming into this market there's seen potentials here and we've been able to deliver as you know you know to add our own fair share into the market share of you know movies you know crossing box office and also nigeria has also been a, a major player in the industry as well you know we started you know, over a decade ago mm. you know the likes of although we've had like uh, you know small cinemas here and there the mm-hmm. audience in the you know the pen cinemas in in a and you know in lagos there. but i think we've we've you know we've structured ourselves to align with the global market and i think uh, silver bed did a great job you know starting off you know a major chain of cinemas and you know we had genesis and now you have female cinemas and i think uh, we have come at a time where the market is actually booming and uh, we are not booming per se but because we're still trying to develop the market in nigeria as well you know reach out to a lot of people who haven't been there but i think that the the industry has grown and uh, we are continuing to grow so it's at its initial stage i mean the the, the ones was a cinema culture in nigeria yes and then over the last three decades or thereabouts, yeah. there seemed to be a, to have been a comet or a, a yeah. slide or a lull. Yeah. And then the last eight, ten years, um, thanks to Ben Ray Bruce, I must yeah. mention his name, <laughs> um, the culture seems to be growing yeah. at an exponential speed. Well, yeah, it's been revived, you know. What do you much. think is responsible for the speed at which the growth would in recording in the industry well i want to peg it as globalization okay it's a key factor you know in this industry because oftentimes what we used to have was not people coming bring you uh vcrs and play you movies what we've had now is people coming into a smaller space worldwide you know you having to go on youtube and seeing that there's a trailer of a movie coming out you want to see it the day it comes out you go on twitter and people are tweeting about this movie so you want to see it the day it comes out so i think what's happened so far is that you know globalization has eaten into us somewhat and you know it's brought us closer to you know to our counterparts abroad and you know that has brought us the the, um, the idea that we who live you know in the uk or in the us you've seen these movies you've been to theaters you've you know and you've come back to Nigeria, you want to see them again, you're telling your friends about this. So I think that experience that people have had abroad, they have, you know, sort of, you know, passed it down to us, you know, to, to our counterparts here in Nigeria. And people are growing into it, you know. I think globalization has played a key part of this and bringing the whole, you know, the whole cinema, the whole uh, industry into a smaller space and people are, you know, 
getting the vibe back and say, okay, I want to see this movie. I want to be part of it. I want to be part of the, the trend as well. Now, um, besides globalization, because I asked that question because um, we know, you and I know, that uh, the cinema culture is still at its embryonic stage yes. in Africa and in Nigeria, especially uh, compared with the Western world and even Asia. True. And uh, we, some of us are concerned, as it were, because we know that it's a huge money spinning industry. Yeah. Uh, yet people say that it's a risky business to venture into. Well, every business is a risky business. Yeah, it depends on how far you're willing to go, how much dream you have, how much passion you have for the business as well. Um, a cinema business, it's quite risky for a lot because there's no, not enough knowledge around for people to actually share. If you say you wanted to go into importation, yeah, you could go somewhere else, read an article, read a couple of them, and you think you know it. Yeah, but in the cinema business, it's different. It's just a fair few of us. So yeah. knowledge is key. Yeah, it's, it's paramount in this business. Yeah, I think, you know, for us, for Film House, yeah, what we have is the knowledge, is the experience. Give or take, we have over a hundred years combined experience in this business. So you see that that's what has been driving us. Now, so far. some will find it difficult to understand what you mean by that. Film and <laughs> cinema is just a few years old. Yeah. And yet you're talking about a hundred years experience. Combined combined. Experience, Are you yeah. talking about the executives in terms of well, their exposure? Exactly. Experience? We've got to, uh, like, my MD used to be, is, is the first black, you know, GM at Audion Cinemas in the UK. And we have all the, you know, all the members of the board who used to be at Audion as well. And these people have been in the industry for decades, you know, give or take. They've been so the they industry. understand how so it works. So they understand how we work down to the nitty gritties of the business. So it's not, you know, we've read the script somewhere and we say, okay, oh, cinema looks good abroad. Let's bring it to Nigeria. You know the business. You've been in the screen. You've been at the movies. You've been at premieres. Do you understand what I mean? So, yeah. I, I do appreciate the fact that you said knowledge is key mm. to success in this industry. And um, you also talked about your executives who've had hands on experience, practical, real, practical experience. What are the avenues are available to one who wants to obtain knowledge about how the industry works? Well, I think uh, the best. The best way to get knowledge about the cinema business, you can read books about it. Yeah, you can go and study histories about cinema business, trends, and what have you. But I tell you this, yeah, to get the best knowledge about the cinema business, you need to be in it. To your internship there, you know, be a part of, you know, the trend. Go and meet people who have been in this industry, let them tutor you. Let them mentor you about the industry. You know, these are the things that. So you, you will not way. ignore apprenticeship, as it no, were. I th it's key. It's very, very important because what you find out is when you operate in this level of business, which is quite capital intensive, yeah. you need to know your onion about it. So it's not something you can just pick up and just start running with. You need to know. You need to How through. much capital do I need to start this business, to venture into this? Well, I tell you. On the average. <laughs> on the average, yeah. Give or take. It usually depends on the kind of cinema you want to view. Okay. The location of the cinema. You know, things like that play into where is the cinema located? Is it in a mall? Is it a standalone cinema? How many screens are you doing? You know. So those things add to the value. But I can tell you for free, it, it's close to a multi million dollar you know, investment that you need to get up so, so we're looking at hundreds of millions of naira possibly yes to start out to start up a proper cinema yeah and the, why i say that is that the expense doesn't stop when you lay your last block you know in the cinema you still have recurring expenditures coming in to like i said earlier the movies that you get you know, you need to, the logistic factors going around, getting these movies and distributors to your cinema, playing them, you know, staffs and all that kind of thing. So, yes, it's a profitable business, I will tell you, but it's capital intensive. Now, besides the capital, uh, startup capital, what other things do I require? You've talked about knowledge, you've talked about capital. 
What else do I need require to venture into this business? Well, you need brains. Yeah. Apart from just having someone who's been in the industry for a long time, you need people who've got raw talent, who've got the drive for it. Specifically, what kind of talents and drives or brains are we talking about here? Business. Business drivers. You, you, like I'm one, you know. I drive, I'm at the cinema now and I'm driving it. The cinema isn't where it was last year. It's grown exponentially in terms of revenue and every, you know, otherwise, yeah. So I'm saying you need people who, who see this as a business and take it on, on themselves as regards, you know, you know, you know when you have like your CEOs, people yeah. think, oh, the boss up there is going to make decisions on how we're going to run out here. Or you need people who can stand alone on their own, take on the business and take it to the next level. Who have a strong sense of initiative exactly. and business savvy. Exactly. So those are the things that you need to make sure that your cinema is quite productive. Now, um, what are the entry options available to a new player or a new entrant? Well, the options are still there. I do know, for instance, that your top executives have uh, worked at top cinemas around the world in other climes, in other continents, yeah. in Europe. Um, what are the other options available uh, well, if, besides working for someone or going on the apprenticeship or mentorship? Well, the same as food, food in Europe, not only for us, but not in Nigeria. But if you wanted to get an idea of how they would run, you probably have to go for cinema courses, okay. or professional courses, and you know, they're quite expensive, but uh, you know, have to go there and learn you know, the integrity of the business. So that's another uh, option. That's another option for you. Yeah. But if you're if you're wealthy enough, you could open one <laughs> and learn from there. Yeah. You make your mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be costly? Well, it's quite expensive, but it's another option, like you said. <laughs> it depends on what you can afford. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm not going to advocate that. Uh, <laughs> no bank uh, would advocate that. Would give out a loan to someone. Well, like I said, you do, if you have enough money by yourself, yeah, you can do it. You can play around with it. I love the way you play. <laughs> Coming up cinema that we build we have our own people coming to it to make sure that you know they make the standard they, exactly and you know so that sound doesn't go through this you might get any other person out there to do it for you but what you have is that your sounds escape from your cinema what uh, is yeah. wrong with the sound escaping from the audience what is wrong with Now take us through the value chain in this business. Well, um, the value chain in the cinema business, oftentimes people think when you come in here, you see the movie and that's it. There's a back end to it. It actually starts from a concept. I think about a movie, I think about a movie, the scriptwriter pens it down, gives you a storyline. So it all begins in the head of the scriptwriter. I tell you, that's where it starts from. It starts from up here. They pen it down, they take it up to the studio. I've got a good, you know, I've got a good work. Check it out. Oh, they like it. It's got contact agents, call the actors. We do some, you know, screening, screen and cast. Yeah, exactly. You know, they check it out. Okay, you fit in, you fit in, you fit in. You shoot a movie. That's been done. You start to publicize these movies. Then you publicize them. There's a momentum towards every release. Yeah, say for Fast and Furious, there was a huge momentum to it. it give the poor walk a factor. Yeah, and you know, that came into it, pushed the business a little, pushed the, you know, the movie some more. And then you get it down to your distributors worldwide. We're looking at Nigeria now, you get it to Nigeria, you get it to us. When you give us these movies, yeah, the movies just don't come to us unannounced. We have a schedule for them. Set, set movie release July 3rd, May 1st, you know, days like that. So you already start to build the momentum on your own as a business driver for the movie at your cinema. Yeah, then you take this movie a step further. You do radio jingles, you know, you go on. Right now, I have a show on radio that I go on every Friday and uh, talk about movies. And, you know, that's an avenue for me. I do that. You know, drive the movie on that level. Then 
when you come into the cinema, for those who have visited, yeah, before your movie, we've got trailers running. Yeah. We show you the trailers of this movie. Yeah, so a few of them out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, you show you the trailers in the cinema, and say, for instance, you were just having a walk past. We've got LCDs located around the cinema, where so you can actually see trailers of coming soon movies, movies that are already shown in the cinema. So that way, people see them, and you know, they want to come and see this movie when so, they're out. So, so uh, is the cinema the final entity on the value chain? Well, I think the appreciation of our guests is the final entity on the value chain. Because it's not just the cinema can be there, the cinema is all around the place, yeah? But how do your guests, we call them guests, so how? Yeah? We call them customers. Yeah, from where? Well, we, we, tend, we, we take them more personally, yeah. But, well, yeah. I guess it's a, it's a matter of nomenclature. So. <laughs> no, but we do, we do, we do take our guests. Guest service is our, is our core value of Film House. And I think yeah, it's something that has driven our business thus far. And that's why we still get return customers, return guests every other now, you know, every other week. Yeah. But, but is there a difference between distributors and cinema houses? Yes, that's a huge difference. Some distributors don't own cinema. Yeah, some do own. Like for Film House, we have Film One Distribution. It's a sister company. Yeah. Yeah. So they are distributors. Right now we do local movies. We're looking at doing international. You know, we've done some local movies like uh, Half of the Yellow Sun. It was done by Film One. Mm -hmm. We've done uh, October One by Conan for Lion. Mm -hmm. When Love Happens. You know, and we're looking at you know going further into into the Nollywood market and the Hollywood market as well to get so distributors can be likened to wholesalers Pretty while much. the cinema houses are like retailers, and the retailers yes yes, oh, yes, great. Great. yes great yeah so we have independent distributors UIP Silverbed Blue Pictures you know those are you know some of the distributors in Nigeria in Nigeria yeah moment. who represent you know the studios abroad oh uh, so yeah. we actually have distributors in Nigeria at the moment yes yes, yes. There's, a lot, there's, there's quite a few of them you know around there they represent like you know some distributors represent three four studios some others represent one two you know, depends on how much you know uh, how much leverage you have you know to get this movies from them yeah. so on this chain um if you want to be a player you could come in at the conception stage as a script writer yeah. or a visionist or a member of the crew cast distribution yeah and to be a distributor of a, for a major studio what does it entail well it's quite a lot you know details of that i might not be able to share with you it's those are trade secrets yeah those are trade secrets for the initiate <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 pretty much yeah but uh well I'm, i know it's quite a lot because you are dealing with highly confidential material and you're in a stage where in an area where there's piracy everywhere so it's a highly confidential, you know, business to run. Anyway, with. let's yeah. let's drop that since you're not going to share it with us <laughs> on camera. But I, 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 I'd like to believe that as your friend, you will share with me after when Ooh. the camera stops Ooh, rolling. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's look at the value chain from your own end here. We already understand where you stand on the uh, value chain yeah. from the broad pictures. But let's narrow it down to your own operation here. Uh, it's not just about playing movies. Yeah. What's your value chain like? So yeah, at yeah, film house at, cinemas. At film house, I think what we do, what we've uh, taught ourselves, or the culture that we've built here, is to sell the experience, not just the movie, not just the popcorn, but we want to sell the total experience to people. And we know that people see value in, an experience, in a good experience. If you went to Obudu and you were homely welcome, and you were taken care of, given a spa treatment for free, you would remember that. Now, before, you said that's a value. Before we come to what you sell, mm. I, I can imagine because everything revolves around the movies. Mm, yeah. Um, the way I'm received here, everything revolves around the movies. Uh, I'd like to assume that movies arrive in a box or something. Yes, like an enclosure. Yes, they do. Like Korea. Quite Korea, most times, yes. In what shape or form does it arrive? Well, DVD format? Well, 
<laughs> well, it's good you said that because a lot of people think uh, when they come to the cinema, we play them DVDs and you know and stuff like that. But I like to you know overturn that notion and say uh, a lot of our movies are done in uh, it's a TCP format. It's called a digital cinema package. You know, it's a format that's been encrypted. It's an encrypted format so, that means you yeah. can't play anywhere else besides the cinema. So it comes in a package in a in a you know uh, a specialized hard drive that you ingest the movie. We call it ingesting. It's more like downloading. You ingest it, put it in your system, and you wait for. It. Usually, it comes days before the movie releases. You know, and you wait for a key to open the movie. We call them KDMs. These KDMs are software themselves, I assume. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And they are sent to you by the dis- by the distributors or the studios for you to open these movies and play to your audience. It's like a password. Like a password, pretty much. Yeah, like a password. So you play this to the audience, and uh, that's the only way you can actually copy piracy. Because if it came in a, a regular hard drive, yeah, you know, people were able to copy it, and you know, it'd be out there. Yeah, but I think, but what I know is in Nigeria here as well, you are also moving to that level. Yeah, Film One is only is the only distribution company in Nigeria right now that does encrypted, you know, packages for for our local for our local market. Yeah. So we're getting there gradually. Yeah, we are. We now, are. when when you receive these movies that come yeah. from abroad, I assume, um, what's the next stage? Uh, I, I have heard you say you get them downloaded into your own system yeah. and wait for the password and the day of the screening, Please, yeah. as it were. Now, what happens on the day of screening? Take us through some of the activities behind the scene. Okay. Before release dates, yeah, we have, um, we already have the materials. Yeah. Yeah, merchandises that we have from them. Like if you, when we take a walk around, I'll show you some, you know, standees that we have already on display. Yeah, so you already have that on display. You already have the movies on your LCD display, the trailers playing on your LCD. You know, you already have trailers on the big screen, and telling people it's going to be out on X Y Z day. So giving people some snippets. Yeah, like exactly. Kind of, uh, yeah, so they can advance and information. Yeah, to anticipate the release of the movie, and on that day you do your normal checks, which you do on a regular day. Make sure everything is, you know, on point. You know, you've got internet to get your, your, um, to get your KDMs and stuff like that. And uh, usually, you go on social media as well. The campaign is already on. There's already a trend for movies, and you build on that. You know, you get yourself prepared. Make sure you have every, you know, retail item on check. Systems working fine. You know. You walk through that you know it's like a normal daily routine check that you do so it's not usually for a certain release say for say you are doing a premiere of a movie like we've done here a couple of times yeah there's extra preparation that go into that because you're having the artists or the actors and the actresses here live the professionals are the professionals are around so you know extra preparation go into all of this you know you maybe you know order for some punch or order for some cocktails to be made as well you know order for some small chops foods like you know make sure the ambience is conducive for the people that you know you're trying to receive we did uh, did the premiere one of our recent premieres was dazzling mirage it's a cool Kulne Kelani movie, yeah, and he was here, and he was totally blown up. So you you also take care of the logistics of entertainment of guests. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. We do that. It's not practitioners who come around. Yes, yes. Yeah, we we just we just don't uh, sit and wait for the movies to come. Like I told you, we're business drivers, and some of part of it is about getting these people to be in the faces of their fans. It's not easy, I must tell you, but uh, we go the extra mile to make sure. You know, Tunde, Tunde, Tunde is one of the, you know, one of the most celebrated directors in Nigeria, yeah, sure. you know, industry, and you know, having to get him down to Ibado, you know, his roots, and coming along with some of his actors as well. It's not easy, you know, but you and do to that. facilitate the interaction between exactly. the practitioners and the and the and their fans out there. That's the end user. That's the end user. Forgiving as well. So. Let's let's come to the venue, the, the venue. Uh, of the screening, 
that's where the action is taking place. Which I, we are now which present. Is where we are at present, <laughs> yeah. you know, thankfully. I can understand the auditorium setting uh, and I can understand the arrangement of the seats because, I mean, it's a no-brainer that has to happen. But I'm also observing a couple of other things here that I'm finding a bit uh, um, difficult to understand. Mm. And for instance, I observe that the walls are padded like a proper studio, a television studio. Well, you're a media person as well, and you understand that you know, quality of sound is very key in this business, and uh, you do not want your sound to be sniffing out holes and getting out there. Even if you're in the radio station there, yeah, when you're in the booth, people don't hear you outside. Sure. Yeah, so what we have here, uh, acoustic walls. You can have a look at that. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. What we have here, acoustic walls, yeah. And these walls are usually done by professionals. That's why in every business, in every cinema that we build, we have our own people come into it to make sure that, you know, they meet the standard. Exactly. And, you know, so that sound doesn't go through this. You might get any other person out there to do it for you. But what you have is that your sounds escape from your cinema and which is not good for your business. You want your people to have the best feel. Like what we have here right now is a 7.1 surround sound system. It's the best that you can get right now in the market. Yeah, we're bringing it to them. It's already here in the bottom. You know, we don't have to wait for Lagos to have uh, it. You, 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 you're just trying to market me. Yeah, no, no, I mean, no, but, no, but it's, a, it's, it's, it's how far we go as a business to please our guests, mm -hmm. to make sure that they get the best. You, you can know? say that. You're, paying, you're paying for it. So you we can need say to that give, again. You know, we need to give you something. Choose your home. <laughs> but but, you know, but what, what, what's yeah. wrong with the sound is escaping from the auditorium. What is wrong with that? Well, you do not get the feel that you should get. You know? If the sound escapes. If the sound, yeah, escape, you know, it's almost like a strict, it's almost like it's, it's hollow when the sounds come out, you know, you want to make sure that the, the speaker, the surround speakers that are there are giving you the right sound so that someone who's up there is hearing it and you don't want sound from outside coming in as well. Because yeah, we have TVs out there, we have people talking on the floor, you can't tell them how to talk. Do you understand what I mean? No, I understand. So you, yeah, so you don't want their talks to get into the screen and you don't want your sound in the screen to get out, making people feel like something's happening inside the, you know, you've got your subwoofer, it produces a decent amount of sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want that to be enclosed because you have other screens as well. Yeah. And yeah, so I also observed that you have uh, a light right here on the floor here. Yeah, yeah. You, you, know, you know when the cinema, you know when the movie starts, yeah? The lights go off. True. The lights go off, and when the go when it goes off, it's usually pitch black in here. True. So we've decided to put like stairway lighting as you know as cool as possible. So like, safety measure. Yeah, safety measure. People don't trip and fall. So we want we put them as cool as possible so that it doesn't affect the people watching the movie as well. So we've tried to put, make sure that you know everything is in place so that when you come in, even maybe five minutes after the movie started, you know you can also enjoy your movie as well. So you know, like like when we go up now, we just have a sit and you know try and see a movie as well, so that you can actually see how this plays into uh, this plays into the cinema. Coming up. Now, how do you conduct your inventory? Because um, I assume every business has to actually inventorize uh, its product uh, list. As it were. Yeah. What is the myth about being at the center of the auditorium in a cinema? Well, it's a fantastic thing. I tell you this, you know, when you have because I've heard people say that the center, center of the auditorium is where this, the sound, where you get the best benefit of the sound. I've heard some people say that. What is the what is the myth? Well, I think the center of the cinema is how do I put it now? When you have sound systems all around you, back, forward, side, left side, right side, and the subwoofer up there, it's almost like the sound comes around yeah. and it settles in the middle. Okay. So you get the best feel of the sounds and you get a, a very great view of your of your screen as well. As regards where we were earlier, you know, okay. a lot of people think the back seats are the best, but you know, I've been in this business for a bit, I know that, yeah. If you want to get the best view, you see out here. So that's why I said, you know, we come out here, try and check out what's going on the screen. And, and you see, uh, I'm having a, I'd like to say, a, a, a much better view of the screen from the center here. Exactly. I never thought about this. You know, I do hear this, this 
being said in different quarters about the, the center of the cinema. Of the cinema. Yeah. Look, it gives you it gives you a great feel, you know, especially when you come into the cinema at you know at a very good time. You know, when you sit in the middle, maybe when it's not too crowded, yeah. When you sit in the middle, you get you know this ambience that, like you are in your own living room. I think I remember just sitting there, not so bad. <laughs> yeah. so, like uh, this is yeah. interesting. You know, like now you're here. Where you're seated, there are people, there could have been people behind you. Yes. But you almost feel like you are in your own space. If you start, if you start behind, there's a wall behind you. So it's almost like it's pushing you forward. Yeah. If you start in front, you're too close, you, you feel like you're too close to the screen. Yeah, you have to tilt up your neck. But here, you're like, okay, you're chilled. And, you know, yeah, it's an eye level for you as well. And if the sounds come on, you know, the sounds come to you. As regards you hearing from one end, you know, but we'll make sure that, you know, wherever part you see in the cinema, you get the same feel, you know, as regards sound, as regards quality of, you know, quality of picture as well. Now, let's talk about niche, I mean, because in today's business world, yeah. niche marketing seems to be the order of the day. You either streamline your target market or you just keep losing your bullets. <laughs> what is niche? marketing to the cinema industry well it's it's quite it's quite interesting i must say this yeah the cinema market for us it's it's almost like it's everybody we appeal to everybody mm. like when you came in you saw pixels you know the pixel standing out there it appeals to kids it appeals to adults as well so we can't actually we, we can't necessarily say we are catering for um adults only or we're catering for just you know families as well. So, so these marketing consultants uh, really don't have business for you. Well, well, they have they have a small business here, a small, very profitable business here for us. But like like film house now, we have uh, we just launched a signature cinema in Ikoyi. It's the first VIP cinema in Nigeria. It's full VIP massage you chairs. Yes, I do say. <laughs> yeah, massage chairs and everything. And it yeah. goes for the same amount? Uh, most definitely not. <laughs> it's VIP. So because it's, I mean, I'm already thinking, I'm already dreaming, watching a movie and getting a massage. Yeah, your chair is there, it's full, it's full massage on. So you got, you have people coming to you like hostesses and you know, the array of things are your you know, at your disposal, uh, you know, even more than because you're paying premium price for this, premium. by the way. You know, I'm just saying that it's like yeah. running a business class, exactly. <laughs> exactly, that's how it is. It's first class, but you're seeing a movie in a bigger screen, wow. and it's very, very much, 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 much more. Comfortable. You're ready with my appetite. <laughs> and I can't wait to get to it. Yeah, please, you should, you should, you should visit. You should I'm visit. Going to my house. <laughs> how do you determine what to screen? Because I can imagine there are thousands of movies that are released every year. Yeah. Well, the, the movies come in, like, we have a schedule already for those movies every other year. And um, who prepares the schedule? Well, the schedules are prepared by distributors as well as cinemas. It's a, you know, collaborative effort, you know, between them. And you also do that with, uh, with the release dates that the studios have set as well. Mm. And uh, when you do that, you have an array of movies coming out. Then you basically have to look as a cinema and say, okay, I think I want to take this movie. I think I want to take that movie as well. But if you, well, when you do that, you have to do that with the with a mindset that you know the audience are going to appreciate it. Because, like I said, if you take a movie, a paranormal movie, which just has you know all them haunted houses and you know stuff like that, and you want to show it in a city like a button, you you need to be telling you be telling yourself like. Uh, how many people are going to come see this movie? If I'm going so, to get... so, so you need to have proper knowledge exactly. about the audience's expectations about a movie yeah. and viewing behavior or yeah. view, viewing uh, pattern. Yeah, exactly. Well. Because it, it guides you. Why are you here? To be here. It's, it's a business. You're supposed to make money. And you're supposed to you know make profit out of it. Now, how do you conduct your inventory? Because um, I assume every business organization has to inventorize uh, its product uh, list, as it were. Yeah. Well, we have an operating system that we use here. It's from um, one of our clients in, in the UK, Jacquel. They've 
you know we have a software that we use everything that we do here from ticketing to retail it's it's been you know programmed to take inventory of all these things so as you take the money before your cash drawer opens stuff like that it takes inventory so if i was like i'm at the back end of the business most of the time yeah i get to see everything that happens in live feed okay yeah so i'm watching you know my cameras i have my back end software that tells me this movie is sold out that movie is sold out that movie is sold out so i get this information and it's been stored on a server and i can check over time and say okay make you know suggestions for the future and say okay if um public holiday last year we did xyz i can forecast for this year and say okay we should do better mark it up by maybe 20 percent to screen movies that are old there's only new releases well we do support old titles uh sometimes not in the you know the part you know not in a long past where we've, we've shown some old titles you know or sophia in london and, you know the meeting the back by popular demand <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah yeah so we've done that you've supported the industry as well the Nollywood industry, we've supported them as well, we've shown their old titles, you know, even much recent ones as well. And what was the response from the audience? Very, very, very distant, you know, very, very distant because people who have missed it or who have seen it a long time ago and want to see it again. If you were to consult for a startup, yeah, what would you be telling them? Well, I'll be telling them the risk in this business, first of all, yeah. If I was to do that, I would be looking at the bad part of the business first of all before I show you the light. And uh, you see, oftentimes people think because Femas is successful, every other cinema is going to be successful as well. It's not always the case. You get me? So but we see audiences trooping to cinemas. Well, they do, but I mean, are your audiences, the amount of audience that come to your cinema paying for your service charge? Are they taking care of your overhead expenditures? Are they, is, that, is there enough money coming in? For you to replicate such structures somewhere else so those are the things that you know comes into the business so you know, in specific business terms what are the bad things you will be telling me well i tell you sometimes the business can be low months in the year there whereby you know the business can be low so and it's a seasonal be, business not per se you know movies when those movies are slotted into you know it's key for you you need to be able to tell them that okay to get this movie from your distributors it costs a lot when you don't make that much money what else can your business do to maintain you know status quo to maintain sustainability in the business you know the other part of the business is this cinema business mm -hmm. that you know people don't know about the marketing part of it there's you know people need to come and do adverts in your cinema and stuff mm -hmm. like that those part of the business a lot of people don't know about so are you harnessing that part of the business enough to cover up for you know for your droughts yeah, you know, things like that. So people need to be able to make so, sure. So the business has its peaks and valleys, like yeah, every other business. Like every other business, you know. The peaks can go skyrocket sometimes. So you've yeah. got to have uh, some palliative measures. Exactly, well, exactly. To keep the tide going. Yeah, for, and also what people need to know is that when you invest in a cinema in the first year, a lot of people want profit immediately. Yep. It's a gradual thing. You've invested a lot of money. You can't come out in one day. So you should be able to be prepared like, okay, five years, ten years down the road, okay, then I can start reaping, you know, if it's very successful, then I can start re reaping the benefits of my investment, you know, return on investment and all that, yeah. But Nigerians want immediate now, 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 now. But yeah, I tell them, you need to chill. If you have this money, you need to make sure that it's not what you want to use to throw your daughter's wedding next year. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you need to be able to calm down, you know, I'll show you the business as it is. Year one, you make this. Year two, you make that. Year three, year four, okay, goes up and higher and higher like that, you know. Mm. So it's yeah. like the media business, really. Yeah. I mean, because a lot of people who go into media, especially television business, don't know that they need to have that window, yeah, uh, initial window where you have to wait. Uh, you, keep, you keep doing you patiently. Wait patiently. You keep doing the right thing. Yeah. You keep getting audiences, but in terms of profitability, it's not going to come. It's not, not going to come, it's it's not not fair, come yeah. until after a few years. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Then you start breaking, you know, walls and breaking barriers. You get getting there. But the thing is, when the businesses are frustrated in those first years, usually most of them pack up. It's 
through. But you need to be able to make sure that you have, you know, cushion, you know. And just to keep the overhead yeah, going. Exactly. So because you've told you, us the downside. What about the bright side? What the bright would you be side telling is the <laughs> new player about well, the bright side? Well, the bright side is you look at certain movies, as they've done in the box office. Yeah. Say for AY, AY is smiling to the bank. Yeah. All through last year, it's smiling to the bank. Yeah, great movie, it's smiling to the bank. And I'm telling a new player, you see what that guy did? It's just a Hollywood movie. Wait till you see a Hollywood movie. Fast and Furious. I don't want to give you specific figures around, you know, other cinemas, but I can tell you for sure, you made millions in the cinema. So whoever dollars. owns the cinema, yeah, up to dollars, yeah. Whoever owns the cinema in Nigeria is going to be thinking to himself, okay, that's good business. And forget about the small, small ones that bring you the ones that you can buy and stuff around. Now, yeah. what, what's, it, what's a marketing strategy for a typical cinema like? Well, it compromises of a lot. You need to know your market. Oftentimes, people go into this market blindsided. You need to know your market. It's audience very vital. psychography. Exactly. What do they want? Are they the cinema going audience? Am I patient enough to build this market? Things like that. Questions like that need to you know, be asked before you start investing. Because if you open a cinema in Lagos, in a key area in Lagos, say for Lekki, for instance, you know people are going to come there. You don't need to tell them. The movie's out. They're going to come see it. If you open a cinema in maybe a gig gay or in somewhere like a coral do, you know, you need to try and drive them. It means you spending more after building the cinema. Do you get what I mean? So to drive traffic. To drive traffic to that cinema, per se, you know. So what are the things you will be doing in specific terms well, to drive um, traffic? Basically, now that we're, like I mentioned earlier, globalization has taken over. Social media has been a very vital part in driving cinema traffic. Yeah. You can harness your social media capabilities, hire a few you know, gurus in the industry, get them there, they start working enough for you. You know, do some billboards, radio interviews and all that. You, know. you can get it out there. Some campaigns, rallies and all that. You know. If you're lucky enough, you know some celebrities, get them to push your business. So that's how you know. Yeah, you Zoom Premiere is one, also one of the marketing strategies. It's very key. It's very key, and location helps you as well. You know, if you wanted to open a cinema, part of your strategy should be get a very good location as much as anything else. I assume that when we get to the lobby, you will be showing me some of the artifacts of marketing <laughs> because What's that? that is key to business. Very, very, very. The key. business of business is making money. That's so why I'll, I'll, I'll need us to do a lot more. Of that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Please follow me. All right. Yes. I'll see you.